evening. Uh, I'm Stanley Passione. I I call this poem uh, Spleen, uh, Spleen, S-P-L-E-E-N. Um, I hope you enjoyed the effort. Let's just get right into it. Huh. Well, aren't you something? You asking me to be your friend. Forgive my lapse into the colloquial, but I lack another way of putting it. Where? Oh, where, oh, where do you get the nerve? What unmitigated gall propels you when you have so far fallen from the mark? The common decency to comport yourself with any, with any norm of self-respect. Concern for well-being of any other. Wanting any notion, regard for truth. Yow! You're on Mars, babe, totally spaced out. Remember that May Day? Our first real holiday together. Our first full day together. After you returned from the homeland. After not having seen me. Me seen. After I have not seen you for seven months. You treated me like, well, I, I must hear, I must resort to vulgarity. The vulgar. Alone, the adjective modifies your behaviors. You treated me like shit. You were skilled in your ways. You started on the offensive. Picky, picky, picky. It must be a symptom, for it certainly points to the way you eat your food. And you played your hand skillfully, practiced as you were in the art. Prevarication. Playing me on for months on end. Lie after lie. And I never caught on then. Hustled me for vittles. A tramp. Told me about some bullshit about how your father treats women. His generosity and free spending until I reminded you that you had told me already how a court order was necessary, him to support his ex-wife and his kids. Overwhelmed by his strength of character, alienated, they never speak to him at all. You, you had me pay for the food, food you ate alone in your hostel. You offered me nothing in return except the sad story, a sordid tale, and not yet the real truth that you would drop later like the other proverbial shoe. The evil of your partaking of a long time affair with a man who proved your alter ego, who proved it over the years his love was equal to yours. Both of you liars, what a lovely affair, match made in heaven. I am surprised, struck by the short duration, only five years when you two lovers seem so well suited, sweetie. How do you do it, remain absent from his arms, you poor child? I know you still love him. Hanker for the mutual abuse. Listen, Mrs. Where talk exists, there's desire. Oh, when Stanley's by, standing by, my, my, the dreadful things you say about him. That awful man and all his lying, his constant running in debt to you, and the way he supposedly with his sex abused you. But who knows? Who knows what really hap what's really happening? Dealing with you, one never hears the truth. The stories, all oh, the stories. Remember that date with Mora? Out of the clear blue, you had to spend the night. She was a long-time girlfriend, you said. But I never heard of her before. I had to be reminded of the story of your meeting. I, I don't believe I ever heard of her again. Mora? Who? I questioned. Let me meet her. Or, or tell me her last name, huh? You would never deign to answer. Your response was silence. You're haughty that way. Learn at home when native in your native land. The terror, the fundamental disquiet. I guess few may imagine how desperate your life. How ill it is, how you must bury it. Let's spend the day shopping, you say. Go searching from store to store. There you see, you know me. It's what I'm like anyway. A running dialogue, you repeat, and convince no one, not even yourself. Your home here in the States, your lessons, you studied hard, gain, advance, placement, and what you learned best was deception. The past arises each time the telephone announces your mother. You lie to your mother. You, a woman approaching the age of Jesus crucified. Still, you are unable to reveal the truth to your mother. It's laughable. Were it so awful, terribly sad. 
You could not tell your mother you were living with me, home with me in my bed, that I had touched you in so many intimate ways. You had professed your love for me and solemnly promised to cherish, honor, and behave. You told me you would make me proud. And you would become a woman of parts, you claimed soul of extraordinary piety and beauty. You misrepresented your intentions to me. You continually lied to your mother, chasing back and forth, duplicity. When the telephone rang, you lived at the hostel, now with me at this address, what was to be our home. But the biggest lie, the lie you tell yourself, about the past being the past, about your ability to forget it. That there exists no such thing as sexual trauma. You claim everything that had to happen as if you were saying, I need no help. My involvement with that man, the horror, has had no impact. It neither affects me or my character. You want to be my friend. You say it over and again. You say what you always wanted but you make no effort to prove it. The central fact, you must face the sickness. It rules you in your biggest lie, your failure to recognize all your wrongs. You're living a lie, a symptom of the thing, the monster within who plots your death. Here is the real truth. Your disease, it kills you. You saw my conduct, how I led with my heart, suspended the critical faculty to woo you with love. You commented praiseworthy about the propriety of my ways, and you saw how I raised my child. Princess, and that's a title your heart's fancy. Princesses, they bellow and world, whole world does see. My marvelous girl, your life now public and up for rebuke, your lousy demeanor and ultimate want. The lowness of your family life, soon immortal. Your treachery live forever in this published verse. You say you want to be my friend, yet do not recognize bosom requires both honesty and accommodation. And you, my love, have not inclination for either. Good evening. I'm Stanley Passione. That was a poem I call... Spleen. Good night.